In this video, I'd like to summarize what we saw in the previous video and to arrive at a more simplified view of dimensional, dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is also called the factor label method or the unit factor method. And reason, the reason it has those names is because instead of focusing on ratios and interpreting what those ratios are saying, the method can be used just by focusing on the units or the labels uh, associated with the measurements. So if we look at this example that we saw in the last video, we converted 3,256 grams into an equivalent number of pounds. And we approached this thinking about, you know, if we started with grams and we multiply by the conversion factor or the unit ratio of the number of kilograms per gram that 1 over 1,000 simplifies to the number of kilograms per 1 gram, then when we multiply those, we'll have converted this number of grams into this box here, this product, gives us the number of kilograms. And then, if this value gives us the number of kilograms, we can multiply by 2.2 over 1 because there are 2.2 pounds per 1 kilogram. So multiplying this quantity by 2.2, results in a solution or a conversion into pounds. So we were really focusing on each of the conversion factors and why when we consider the unit ratio, the amount of one unit per something else, it made sense to approach it this way. But if we approach it just looking at the labels, it's actually a little bit more simplified. So I wrote down the process down here. This isn't something you need to memorize. It's just helpful to have a, you know, some bullet points here. We want to start with what we want to convert, which is exactly what we did in the previous video. And we are going to multiply by these conversion factors, but instead of really focusing on the ratio and the unit ratios, we're going to be thinking about the units or the labels. And if we wanted to cancel out grams, and grams initially was in the numerator or just, you know, in the numerator of this supposed fraction here, in order to cancel out grams, grams needs to be in the denominator of the conversion factor. And we want to go from grams to kilograms, then kilograms needs to be in the numerator. So this process really focuses on canceling out units. So here we would cancel out grams and we'd be in kilograms, and then if we multiplied by 2.2 over 1, kilograms would cancel and we'd be left with pounds. So it really focuses on the units. Let's look at an example on the next slide. So what I want to do in this video is to think about the units and use dimensional analysis or the factor label method and to cancel out cups and to convert cups into an equivalent amount of teaspoons. So the first thing we want to do is actually, it's very similar to what we were doing before, is so we want to make a plan. Do you know a direct conversion factor from cups into teaspoons? I don't know that off the top of my head, but I do know cups into ounces and I know the number of ounces and tablespoons, and I know tablespoons and teaspoons. So this is my plan. These are the units that I'm going to go into. I'm going to use dimensional analysis to first change cups into ounces, then I'll convert ounces into tablespoons, because I know that memorization there, and I know t uh, tablespoons into teaspoons. And if it helps, you might want to write this. I know one cup is eight ounces, I know that there are two tablespoons in one ounce, and I know there are three teaspoons in one tablespoon. So I'm going to use this plan and these conversion factors to, to set up my dimensional analysis. So with dimensional analysis, we're going to start with what we want to convert, which in this case is four cups. And oftentimes, especially if we're just dealing with a single unit and we're not talking about a rate, as we'll see in the next problem, a rate has a unit in the denominator. If we're starting with just some unit, it's often nice to just start with it over one. And what we know, using dimensional analysis, we're going to be multiplying by some conversion factor. And we want to, if we're taking a more simplified approach, we want to be able to cancel out cups and go into ounces. And the factor label method from this approach says if I want to cancel out cups, and I'm multiplying by a conversion factor, then cups needs to be in the denominator of my conversion factor. And the reason why is because cups on my 
initial factor here is in the numerator. So in order to cancel it out, I need to put cups down here. And I want to go from cups into ounces. And in the previous video, as you know, we really interpreted this, this product. What does this mean? It's the number of ounces per cups. Now we can kind of take a more simplified approach to think about, well, this is just cups will cancel, will go into ounces. Now I'm going to go and put in the, the values that make that conversion factor true. I know that one cup is equal to eight ounces. Now if I were to stop right now, I know cups would cancel. And this product would result in an equivalent amount of ounces. But I don't want ounces, so I'm going to continue. I'm going to multiply by another conversion factor where I want to cancel out ounces, which tells me if I want to cancel out ounces, then that needs to be down here in the denominator. So I'm going to cross that out. So ounces needs to be down here in the denominator, and I want to go from ounces into tablespoons. Now, if you know the relationship between ounces and teaspoons, feel free to use that here, but I don't off the top of my head, so I'm going to go ounces into tablespoons. And I know that there are two tablespoons and one ounce. And by multiplying by this conversion factor next, ounces would cancel, and I'd be in tablespoons. That's not what I want, so I'm going to do one more conversion factor, and I want to cancel out tablespoons. So since tablespoons is in the numerator, I need to cancel that out by putting it in the denominator, and go into teaspoons. And I know the relationship between these quantities. There are three teaspoons in one tablespoon. So finally, I see that tablespoons would cancel, and I would have my resulting teaspoon. So I'm going to circle that. When I circle something, that's something that I do just to keep track of, okay, I'm done. And now the last thing that we need to do is to just multiply all of these values. So we have 4 over 1, 8 over 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 1. So you can see all the denominators here are just 1s. So we're just going to have 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. You could write over 1, but if you divide anything by 1, it's the same. So we see that it's just 4 times 8 times 2 times 3. So I'm going to put all that in my calculator. If you want to pause the video and do that right now, feel free. So I got 192. And we know the denominators, the, the product of all the denominators is just 1, so 192 over 1. I'm just going to write it as 192, and the unit is teaspoons. So hopefully this makes a little bit of sense. This is called the, this is dimensional analysis, but when it's called the factor label method or the unit factor method, you can tell there's a little bit of a spin on it where we're focusing on the units. We're not really thinking about the ratios as much as canceling things out. Now, with that being said, this is definitely a more simplified view, but I might still ask you on a quiz, on the homework quiz, or on your midterm exams to interpret what's happening in dimensional analysis. So when we take four cups and multiply it by eight over one, why does that convert this into ounces? So you'd want to incorporate your understanding of ratios and proportions in order to address that question. The final thing we want to do is to convert a rate. And this is just a little bit more complicated because now instead of focusing on one unit, cups, into another unit, like teaspoons, we're now changing a rate, so a pair of units into another pair. So when I'm thinking about this, I need to convert micrograms over seconds, and I need to convert that into milligrams over hour. So we have two sets of conversions here to do. The first is we need to somehow convert micrograms into milligrams because both of those are in the numerator. And actually, that's fine. I know that conversion. That's a conversion to memorize. So I'll be able to go directly from micrograms into milligrams. What you will then need to be able to change seconds into hours. Some of you might know the number of seconds in an hour, but just to show that if you don't, we can do an intermediate step. I'll first convert it into minutes, and then I'll convert it into hours. So this is my plan. I've decided to change first micrograms into milligrams, and then seconds into minutes, and then minutes into hours. So we're going to start this very much like we did above. Write what we are converting. Write, with, write down what we, it is that we're changing. And now let's focus on canceling out micrograms first. So I want to multiply by a conversion factor where I want to cancel out micrograms and I want to go into milligrams. So this is going to be the conversion factor. 
because micrograms is in the numerator, I need to have it in the denominator to cancel. And I'm going to go from micrograms into milligrams. And you should know that one milligram is 1,000 micrograms. If I were to stop right now, micrograms would cancel. And this product, if I multiplied these two fractions together, I would have the total number of milligrams per second. But that's not what I want. I do have my milligrams, so I'm going to circle that. But I need to multiply by a conversion factor in order to cancel out seconds. Notice the unit that we want to cancel is in the denominator. So that tells me I need to have, in this conversion factor, seconds in the numerator. And I'm going from seconds into minutes. And when you multiply that, we know that there are 60 seconds in one minute. And when you multiply by 60 over 1, seconds will cancel and will be in minutes. So ask yourself, if you stopped right now, what would we have? We would have the milligrams in the numerator, and in the denominator we'd have minutes, so milligrams per minute. We're almost there. We need to cancel out minutes. So since minutes is in the denominator, I want to cancel that out. I know it needs to be in the numerator of the next conversion factor, and I want to go into hours. So I know there are 60 minutes in one hour. Minutes will cancel, and I will be left with hours. So circle that. We have arrived at if we uh, a value of milligrams in the numerator or a unit of milligrams in the numerator and a unit of hours using these conversion factors. So we're going to multiply all the numerators. So if you multiply 10 times 60 times 60, you're going to get 3,600 times 10, so 36,000. And you divide that by 1,000. I got that by taking 1 times 1,000 times 1 times 1. So what you get is 36. And this is milligrams per hour. Milligrams per hour. Now, again, just to take one more step back, we see here that conversion factors, we're trying to cancel out units, so we have to be conscious of where the unit is to begin with and where it needs to be in the conversion factor. And uh, one thing I want to mention here is why multiplying by 60 seconds per one minute makes sense. Uh, it's very similar to changing, if you know 10 micrograms are going in every 60 seconds, well, if you multiply that by 60, you're going to have the total number in one minute. So very similar to what we saw in the previous video where we are talking about unit ratios. But now we're almost kind of flipping those and we're starting with the number of micrograms per second and multiplying it by, in this case, 60. Then we know the total number that would be given over one minute. So if you're unsure about that or you're unsure about this process, be sure to go to the questions and answers board to ask questions and uh, practice. So practice a few examples and be sure to reach out if you have questions.